the new quad capacitor arrived. And what we're going to do is we're going to take two measurements. Uh, of course, it's, it's going to be good because it's brand new, but we're going to measure the capacitance. Uh, there are four capacitors in here, 320s and 130. And all I'm going to do is go to each one right here. We see 22. 22. Let me turn the unit. Far one. If I could get it. Twenty-two, and finally the last one here should be thirty. So we have thirty. So everything's good. What I'd like to do, uh, even though um, we're not using the old one, is do an ESR comparison on this one, and then compare it to the one that was in there. Now we're going to measure the ESR uh, for a capacitor this big. We're expecting a couple of ohms or less, but. Uh, Anything under like uh, two and a half ohms would be more than sufficient for a capacitor of this size. So let's measure it out and see what we got. We got 1 1.8, 2.0, 1.7, and 1.5. Now if we look, we'll probably see 2.0 was the square one. And uh, no, there's no correlation between the uh, the capacitance and, and that ESR. That's just what it was. So this, this one is good, and it's going to replace the one that's in there. Once we have that in there, we have our we already have our, our negative bias uh, uh, for, for the tubes from the selenium rectifier. And this is the one that was really important. Uh, without, without a working capacitor, there's no way I would put in the rectifier. So we're going to uh, take this one out. We're going to replace it with the new one. And while we have that one disconnected, we're going to measure that RF choke one more time. Because I was able to measure for resistance. It came out pretty good. But uh, the amount of Henry's of inductance that was coming off that coil was, was a little bit low for my liking. And it was su suggested to me that it be measured out of circuit. So what I've done here is to preserve the connection so I don't have to uh, go back to the schematic and find out how it was wired. I went and, and snipped off these connections from the capacitor at their, at their lugs. So all four of these are connected, as well as I'm going to, to snip off this, this ground, which goes to the star ground right over here. And then basically it's just a matter of turning these tabs and pulling the thing out. That way when I put the new capacitor in, uh, as long as I observe the, uh, um, the direction that it's facing, and you could see the indicators there, I can pop the new one in and solder the connections on one by one for a nice uh, clean replacement. I pulled out the old unit right here by breaking off the tabs. The unit's not going to be reused. We're going to do some testing though because we have it out and simply replace it with this unit. So let's get the capacitor meter in here and see what kind of readings. So here we have the value of 30 and, and we're getting nothing. And all the remainders are going to be 20. So we're going to go to the next one. We got nothing. We have the same exact values on those, so we're going to actually ohm those out and see if they short it together. This one is reading 26. This is supposed to be 20. So it's actually, that one's actually, I guess you could call it okay, but no. And finally, this last 20 reads 32. So that's the readings that we're getting on this one. So most, most definitely, I mean, the thing is gone. But we're gonna we're gonna do some some other uh, measurements on this unit. For our ESR, we're getting on the on the thirty cap. We're getting uh, no no connection showing here, and we go to our first twenty, and we get four point three seven. Um, the next twenty, we have no reading whatsoever, and on the third, the third one. Let me make sure they're not touching four point eight. So yeah, bad cap all around. I've done various tests on the unit, and most notably, I found that the um, there is not an open between any of these and ground. There is resistance out. The meter loading it up does cause some fluctuation, depending on how the meter set. But that is definitely not an open condition. Um, so there are other problems going on in this can. You could imagine if if, if four circuits converged here and there was a, a connectivity in between them. Or, or connectivity directly to the ground that that will cause some serious issues. So that's going to conclu conclude the test of this unit. Taking a moment during my work to use this opportunity to have it disconnected 
to be able to measure this RF choke uh, without being connected to anything. And sure enough, it brought me back to a more appropriate level of 1.5 Henry's. It was reading uh, 0.7 or less when it was in circuit. It probably had a lot to do with the fact that the capacitor was shorted to ground. So I'm able to get that out of the way and rule that out as a possible issue. So now I'm going to solder in the connections and finish this everything off. back together now. Everything soldered in as it was into the new one. You'll notice that I bent the tabs and didn't twist them. Those tabs that hold the uh, capacitor into place. And it's, it's a little bit loose. But I have my ground connected to the star ground. The reason for this is that I plan on removing this. Uh, once we have all the bugs worked out to do something with the chassis and I don't want to twist and gnarl those connections So bending them will hold them in place just good enough for now to be able to get everything done I also didn't do a full twist around on every single component uh, I find that in a lot of old radios and I really hate it because it makes it a nightmare to remove those components So everything's bent to a 90 uh, Some may not look like it, but everything's bent to a 90 and wrapped around once and everything is soldered off so what we could do now is bring it up on the Variac after I make a couple of connection tests and make sure there's no shorts. And then what we're going to do is put in the uh, rectifier. I got the rectifier tube in. And what I did was I purposely uh, uh, drove it with less voltage. I'm down to about 100 volts. This would pretty much make sure I would not exceed the, uh, the level on the bias. So what I did was I picked the lower voltage at about 1 volt at 100 volts. And the reason why I did this was to make sure that both of these sides were roughly the same. I don't know the, the overall condition of these potentiometers. So if I look at one side, I'll see one volt. And if I look at another side, I'll, I'll see another volt. That way, as I increase the voltage of the, uh, the uh, unit, this rectifier right here, um, it, obviously it's, it's starting to throw out current. But what's going to happen is, is that I'll know that roughly what the other side is going to look like before I get a chance to adjust it. So I'm going to increase that voltage in 15 volts. So we're on the, the, the threshold of the lower end of, of what the voltage should be for this. Though I can't get accurate readings, obviously, because I got the uh, um, thing sitting downward. But what I got is 1.28 volts on, on the right channel. And what I can do is I can go and put it in the left channel. The contacts are a bit dirty and I can see that I got I got 1.26 so that's exactly what I wanted to accomplish so what I could do is I could let this thing um, heat up for a little bit uh, stabilize and then bring this up to uh, um, I'm gonna go with 1.4 or just about 1.4 for the purposes of testing I have no need to sit and run this on on the the threshold for operation just in case something goes wrong that's what we're going to do now. Now that we know what our bias is, we could safely turn on the amplifier with the uh, rectifier in there. And we know that we're not going to uh, push too much current through these tubes. This is a good time, however, now that I have that rectifier in there, to do two things. Number one, I want to see what the uh, uh, voltage is um, on these two leads right here. This is the AC side of the rectifier. At what voltage the input voltage is over here to see what type of transformer we're working with. This was recommended to, for, to me by somebody on one of the, uh, on, on the uh, Dynaco forum. And uh, basically what I'm shooting for is 360 volts AC with this thing, you know, pretty much fully loaded. And to get this thing to 360 volts, I would uh, basically turn the Variac within a, a safe, within a safe operating range. And then once that's at 360, come along and measure uh, these connections here and tell me what the input voltage should be for it Also doing that now that we're also loaded down. We're going to come back to the um, To the heater that uh, 6.3 6.4 volt heater and see what kind of drop we get on that too So we're going to do that next what I came up with and just to show you how much my variant gets loaded down It's showing 122 volts, but what we're actually seeing on here on our input voltage is 117 with 117, I could go to the rectifier on the AC side, and I'm going to see, you know, 358, 360 volts is what I'm looking for. And here's the other one, is um, 359. Now, um, one of the other things that I really wanted to look at was the uh, 
the heater voltage. And while I can't measure that while holding the camera and, and doing this all at the same time, at 117 volts input voltage with 360 volts AC on here, I'm getting exactly 6.4 volts on both heaters, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. So this is a 117 volt transformer, no doubt. And everything seems to be operating correctly. I'm going to remeasure all of my voltages now that I have the, the system fully loaded down. Also worth noting, and I just came upon this, uh, in increasing the voltage, naturally the, the bias uh, voltages changed from, from you know all the other component voltages adjusted. And what I'm actually getting is 1.56 volts on, on this one. I'm getting a, a lower voltage on this, but it just happened to be that way. I'm gonna dial that back actually, back to 1.4, now that we have um, what's going to be our, our official voltage measurement setting for this unit. And it's a good idea, I've also found, to wait for everything to warm up, because these voltages do change. The rectifier uh, uh, goes pretty high and then drops down pretty low and then comes up again as everything uh, turns on. But yeah, everything is working as expected.